Hello, hello. Good morning, good evening. I'm jumping live and I will be joined by amazing Louis, who is, uh, is a wonderful soul, beautiful human being, trauma therapist, um, somatic educator, musician. Oh, so many, so many beautiful things. Let me try to add him in while, oh, let me see, how can I do it? Ah, oh, here it is. So as he is jumping on, I just, holistic life. All right. Navigate, oh, there he is. Holistic life navigation is being invited to join. Hi, every. oh, and there he is. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so happy to have you here and I'm excited for our chat, which I titled as The Trauma Lives in the Body. Mm -hmm. And um and yeah, everybody who's joining, welcome. If you have any questions, then use the little question mark button to uh to drop them in because probably the the comment section will be too a little bit too overwhelming to keep an eye on, but um I just want to say my warmest welcomes to Louis, who's, uh, who's a, I did like a little introductory, uh, introductory part for you, but, um, but I really, really resonate of like what you are sharing uh, to the world, especially like through this Instagram platform and, and sharing your own story and, and your takes on, on traumas. And, um, and I would really like start to, I would really like to start with, seeing how you view the trauma were uh, like through the trauma lens of like because we're both such a like fans of somatics and we know that the trauma is stored in the body so how do you view all of this work like why do we need to include body to this journey and, and like why doesn't just thinking happy thoughts um really cut it Ooh, that's a good one <clears throat> first of all it's my first instagram live with anybody so thank you <laughs> you're my teacher right now <laughs> <laughs> um, I love this question because I love how you said why thinking happy thoughts isn't enough. I think, I think what's interesting about trauma is we've oriented toward the events, right? So I've had, you know, over the years when I was in private practice, clients would come in and say, oh, my trauma was my father was abusive. And I get why we think that, but that's not actually tra trauma at all. That's like a yeah. horrible experience. Um, trauma is that yeah. reverberation of the experience. And so it, it's in the bones and the nervous system and the cells and the tissues. It echoes in our actual body yes. when the experience happens <clears throat> and the echo just keeps happening for decades. So yes. it's this stored event and stored response. And so thinking isn't going to do anything but either temporarily soothe or temporarily distract us and relieve us from the sensation we have to dive into the sensation and actually experience them to, to get somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Like, I love that you brought it in that trauma is, is not like how we perhaps are used to view it as, as a traumatic event. So trauma was an event, which kind of takes the power away because we don't have any power to change what happened in the past. That's but right. trauma is actually like what happened in result to that mm. event. So like, like the wound that we have inside and that gives us the power back because we can care and heal and, and yeah, like take care of that wound. Right. So um, I love the one in one of your posts as well, like you, uh, you address this, that it's, it's not about like, oftentimes we, we tend to view emotions, you know, like those hard emotions come up or, or we get triggered and like, this is the problem. Like the emotion itself is the problem when in fact is it's rather to do like our relationship to that mm. emotion, like mm. how well can mm -hmm. we contain and hold it? So what's your take? Like how, how can people start to become better feelers? How can they start to really listen to what the body is telling because the emotions are just the language of the body, right? So, mm -hmm. so how mm -hmm. can they really start to become better communicators with their bodies? So you said so many things that I want to talk about. I have like a little list in my mind. I'm going to rewind. <laughs> you had said like, <laughs> you said trauma isn't in the past. And I just wanted to kind of add to that trauma is right now. It's like when I reflexively reach for the bag of potato chips, that's trauma when I can't sleep at night, that's trauma. When I don't feel safe in the world because the event is still reverberating, that's trauma. 
So you're absolutely correct. When we put the trauma into the past historical event, we lose all agency. And that's why we feel hopeless when we're traumatized. When we realize, oh, it's happening right now in my body, I can literally touch it with my hand. There's this instant invitation to what you just said, relate. And oh, wow, I get all lit up. You know, so like trauma for me is, is very animistic. I see trauma as a being, as a creature, as a spirit. I think when we talk about possession, we were actually talking about people being traumatized. And so mm -hmm. when trauma comes in, it's this life force energy from nature that propels us towards survival. And it just gets stuck. It's not a bad force. It's just too much life force in a way. It's like a potency of our actual vitality it gets stuck somewhere. And in that stuckness is what you're saying. What we call emotion is sensation. Everyone listening, we think of, um, think of I'm happy, think of I'm sad, think of I'm angry. What tells you that? It's a sensation. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. emotion is how we've tried to name and organize sensations, essentially. And when we realize that we can relate to them, we start to notice, oh, the sensation is looking to be expressed and moved. And when I sit with it and feel it, the actual, I'm going to try to explain this, the actual feeling of the sensation, let's say it's this little stored area in my chest, all mm -hmm. of my fascia and muscles around my chest center have to soften for me to feel the sensation. And in that softening, it creates space for the sensation to move and unfurl and live in me. And eventually it metabolizes, which it's trying to do desperately, right? But mm -hmm. to be able to do that, we need capacity. Because sensation itself, especially when it's that trauma event, it's the sensation of threat that's coming up to metabolize. So we actually in real time have to be able to sit in the feeling of threat until the body releases it. And that's not a small thing to do. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I, I love like, I, I, oh my God, like, I, and I'm getting fired up by like <laughs> listening to you because like there's, it's such a beautiful way, like how our mind wants to understand what's going on. And that's why we create like these beautiful mind maps, right? It, whether it's mm -hmm. like an inner child uh, work, whether it's we are giving them like as uh, identities or descriptions or like, or, you know, like a persona, right? So it's, it's, it's a matter of like what works for you and what allows you to tap into that process. Because if it, it, like initially what we want to do is like, okay, how can I sit with that emotion? Like you said, how can I relax into it and therefore release it, right? Uh, and, oh, what else? There's, uh, yeah, shadow well, can work we pause, is- Can is we is pause work. there? Because you said something great. You said mind map. I've ne never heard that before. I just, I love that. Because like you just said, all these things we say, they're this way we can temporarily organize this very disorganized, abstract, mysterious experience. So it gives us a sense of control and there's like a temporary capacity there. Yeah. So I love that because it points to that place of, okay, it gives us a temporary way in. Then mm -hmm. once we're in, like, what do I do with that? And, yeah. and that's really where the somatic practice and food comes in for me because it, mm -hmm. it builds a biology of actual capacity so you can withstand the sensation when it arises. Yeah, yeah, I think it's it's such a like a powerful thing that we, we can't like separate or yeah, like separate each other, uh, like the body as a physical and psychological mechanism. And then we have our thoughts, we have our emotions, we have our like, the spirit that lives within. And we have to take care of all of those sides. So if we don't mm -hmm. take care of like our body, you know, like if we don't sleep well enough, if, if we don't put like nutritious, healthy, supportive food into that into this body, that all of a sudden we have like a really wobbly foundation to do any of the other um, like this mental emotional layer work. And uh, you, you mentioned something about like, how can we understand that we are feeling an emotion, right? Like what tells us that we are happy? What tells us that we are sad? And I think so many, so many of us are like disconnected. You're like, what do you mean? I just, I just feel it. But yeah, but where do you feel? Like, how can you understand that your body is like communicating that I am feeling sad, I am feeling happy? Like, what, mm. what's happening inside? And it's in and of itself, like having that presence and that that quiet moment to tune in and really listen to your, like, listen and ask 
from yourself like okay what is really going on like where do i feel mm. tension where do i feel expansive where do i feel like where and what do i feel and how my body communicates and this is how we can start to develop this connection to with ourselves because i think what trauma does is like it often sounds like disconnects us right from ourselves mm -hmm. because at some point we haven't felt safe enough to really be fully in it because we we just didn't have that could have that capacity like you mentioned so it's all about like, like now how can we tune back in and learn that it's actually safe to hold those emotions that felt so overpowering and overwhelming mm. at one moment um, absolutely right? well that piece you just said about the disconnect is so important you know the term we use for that is dissociation and mm -hmm. it's such a gift it, it literally like you said disconnects you from something you don't have capacity to be with so that chronic state of disconnect is just, is just the result of i don't have a way in i don't know the way in so we disconnect it's like very intelligent actually so we don't have to be with that Super pain intelligent. right and I, I find that one thing that really a huge shift in my personal process of, of trauma releasing, I, I say trauma healing a lot, but I'm trying to say releasing more because it, it, when we hear healing, we get this almost like, you know, hierarchical thing of I'm going to be healed mm -hmm. someday. And yeah. I just, I think it's an endless cycle of release. Absolutely. So it never just stops. You know? <laughs> not, not to like dis <laughs> disencourage anyone to gonna go to the healing journey, but yeah, totally, it, it totally. is like an, it's just being part of human being, how to regulate and then how to feel through those emotions. Yeah, completely. Exactly. Exactly. And one thing that really shifted it for me was I started noticing, actually, I, I was, I went to what's called IRF. Have you heard of inner relationship focusing? No, I, I've heard like the inner, um, uh, internal family system. Internal family system. Yeah. yeah but to feel, so the, feel free this to. This one's like, like I, me. this is like IFS, but like through the somatic lens, I think you'd really appreciate it. It gets you in touch with what you just said, the what and the where, and then you shift I'm angry to there's anger inside of me. And that mm -hmm. little shift of I'm angry or no, there's a sensation in my chest I call anger. It just gently separates me in a healthy way enough from the emotion. So I am not becoming the emotion because when mm -hmm. I'm anger, what do I do? I'm anger. I'm, I'm in it. What do I do? I'm with anger. That? Yeah. I'm anger. But, I, but when I say, yeah. oh, there's anger in my stomach, I become the steward to the anger in my stomach. I can actually be with it. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And like such that. a little shift, right? It's like, I am angry versus I am feeling anger. I am experiencing right. anger, right? That's and right. And it makes this really small, but super important um, Huge. separation. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And I see all these hearts going up when you're saying that, because y'all can even try it. You know, if you feel tired right now, if you feel angry, if you feel hopeless, you can you can play with, I'm experiencing hopelessness somewhere in my body. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's so different. So different. Absolutely. And the way that like I like to also view this work, um, and like when emotions come up within me as well, right? It's like, shifting that perspective of like oh my god something is wrong why it's there how can i get rid of it like ooh, like all of this like mm, like this cycle that it mm. that you must have like or that how we used to perceive that and coming back to the fact that okay like i have energy stored in my body that my body didn't know what to do at one moment in time and now this emotion is like ready like my body is telling mm. me like okay it's coming up right so how can i like gently release it and meet it like meet it with compassion and in like presence which is not an easy thing to do when you don't have that capacity when you don't have that felt sense of safety because if you don't have that safety then you know your mind makes you believe that First of all, the emotion that is coming up takes you over, like you mm -hmm. are becoming that emotion. And second of all, there's a high chance that it will never leave. Like it, it's, it's here to stay, right? So, and, and all of that is, is really scary and we don't want to lean into it. But now as I'm like, okay, as I know that the emotion is here for me to release, not to fix, not to change, but just to meet and release, how can I now like, I think there's so much like liberation in it because now all of a sudden me feeling that emotion, I know that I'm actively helping to release it instead of me trying to go, you know, 
bypass in any way, right? Like, oh, let me just like dive into work or go work out or go shop or, or go use a substance mm -hmm. or go overeat or whatever it is. How can I actually lean in? And there's so much, there's so much power that comes out of it and wisdom once we tap into that, um, that side and like start to view the emotions um, from that angle. It's really true. And I find what's so important about what you're saying I, I often say charge is non-binary because these mm -hmm. emotions are just names for different levels of charge, right? And when we see it as not good or bad, then there isn't that fear response to the sensation itself. Mm -hmm. But like you're saying, when we're taught and when we've practiced fearing something that's coming up in us, we're not going to have any willingness to be and meet that. It's not going to happen. It's how we are with human beings. I'm taught to fear a certain demographic. I'm having no willingness to speak or see that person. So I'm taught to fear my anxiety. I'm taught to fear my anger. I teach myself and I'm taught by others. And so I'm very practiced at doing what you said, which is the anger comes up. This is bad. Let me go to the chips. Let me go to mm -hmm. social media. Let me dissociate. The body mm -hmm. takes over, right? Because there's a secondary stress response to the sensation itself. When we start to see the sensations are all one beautiful creature moving through us, we don't have that secondary response to them. And then there's a part of us that's open. So my yeah. shoulders might feel totally safe with an anxiety in my stomach. And then there's a resourcing that can speak to the stomach and create some space for that to metabolize instead of my whole body bracing against my stomach. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I, I love um, the term that I'm using, like, for this tool when I'm, when I'm working with clients, it's emotional balancing, which means mm -hmm. that we used to, like, like when it, when an emotion comes up, we feel like, okay, this, this is all that exists, right? It's only mm -hmm. that anger, mm -hmm. it's only that sadness. And then once we tap into, like, oh, wait, let me just, like, step back for a second and see that I have the capacity to hold multiple things at the same time so whether it's like tuning into through your bodies and feeling like okay I am feeling like this tension in my chest or, or this thing in my in my throat but at the same time I can feel that oh there is there is calmness maybe you know like deep in, in my belly or or there's still like gratitude that I'm feeling towards this moment so I can hold like multiple things and that in and of itself already takes the just the power of that charge a little bit like you know it makes you more capable of holding mm -hmm. it. Mm. Yeah, I just love that. You know, in somatic experiencing, we call that pendulation. And mm -hmm. it's exactly what you're saying. It's just two different words, but the same practice yeah. of exactly. if there's anxiety in my chest, I start to learn where is there not anxiety in my body. And I don't do that to bypass. I do that to add like, okay, there's yeah. tension here and there's calm in my legs. Wow, there's a part mm -hmm. of me that's calm and a part of me that's mm -hmm. tense. And then we start to be with our complexities and we're not just one thing, which I find uh, fascinating and freeing. Yeah, yeah. And something that I, I use to ground myself in those moments is also like, and, and it's okay if you know, you're in the middle of emotion and like you're a human being and you can have this whirl of like, woo, okay. And then once this little bit of calmness comes up again, I can, I can ground myself in the knowing that there are parts in me that are so loving, so strong, so resilient, such a like a being of light that it can mm -hmm. hold mm -hmm. those little shadow aspects. And, and that for me, it's almost like I can feel like there's there's some grandness who's holding mm -hmm. that sadness, that that anger, that whatever the like fill in the gap, right? So I'm not like doing it on my own. I'm not facing the sadness one on one. I have so many parts in me that are helping me to hold this. And, uh, and that's another like a really powerful shift um, that I feel happens once we are doing this work, once we are tapping into somatics, we're creating that felt sense of safety uh, within. It really is. And it's why I, I see self-regulation as co-regulation with the self for the reason you just said, because there are parts of me and the conscious witnesser. So not my body, but the being that witnesses my body, like all of us are doing right now, that part holds space for these parts and these parts hold space for these parts. So there's this whole universe inside of me that has capacity for all parts of me. And when I say 
I'm anxious, I tell the story that my being, my identity, my state is anxiety. When I say there's anxiety in my chest, or like you said, I'm experiencing anxiety, anxiety becomes an expression of a part of me, not a fixed mm -hmm. state or identity of all of me. And that's yeah. hugely transforming. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just the language. It's just the vocabulary that yes. your body is using to, to describe you, what's happening in this present moment, as well as like bringing something up that has been mm. there for a long time. So boom, yes, I, I, like this, this is the moment for me to once again, like release and not like push it back down. Yes. Um, yes. What do you, do you feel like, um, like when it comes to like this trauma <clears throat> releasing and like starting this journey, um, do you see that it's 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 like possible for people to like just like solo write it and and do it do trauma work on their own or is it still something that you know like gets really like the, the journey itself is supportive when you have other nervous systems around you who can hold space mm. and can co-regulate with you so, so how do you yeah. what's your take on that i think it's it's both and um, mm -hmm. and for a couple of reasons, uh, I'm an animist, so I believe everything's alive. So if I don't feel safe with humans, I can go into the forest and there are so mm -hmm. many creatures and elements and energy of the, of the forest that can hold me more than a human can sometimes. So that's like a whole other relationship to access when your mind is open to that. Those of mm -hmm. us who are just open to the human co-regulation it's unfortunate because um and it's it's really kind of like a reverberation of, of colonization to believe that humans are the only only beings that we can really have deep deep relationship or connection to um we miss out because um, for a lot of us our traumas came from human relational experiences so we're already over coupled in not trusting or expecting something with humans and i find that when we start with nature and plants and animals and like I said, elements, water, food, like there are so many living creatures that actually sustain and, and nurture our bodies. We can build capacity with them and then we can yeah. move into like the human realms. Um, yeah. But, yes. the collect but the collective work is, is huge. Like I I've only gotten to experience that in the last few years because I spent over a decade in private practice. And then because of the pandemic, I started doing online and group and courses. And I saw a huge shift in people's ability to do deep work in a shorter amount of time in a group space compared to the people yes. who were alone with me. Um, so I yeah. prefer communal healing spaces more than in the individual for sure. I don't think it's the only way, yeah. but it's what I prefer. Yeah, yeah, I, I so agree with you because I think there's such a powerful synergy that happens when we are in a group container. And before I'm gonna dive into that, I, I, I want to say that like, Yes, like big yes to having nature, like a mm. source to co-regulate and, and like come back to yourself and, and use as a tool. And and we have so many, so many beautiful things that the nature offer, offers us to, to come back to ourselves and to start regulating and bringing our nervous system into like this beautiful calm state. Mm. Um, but as you mm. said, like most of our traumas are relational. So mm -hmm. I think it's, it's, it's a good like place to start to start to build that capacity to start to really know yourself and then kind of like listen and, and and understand okay i'm not my thoughts i'm not my feelings but i'm experiencing them and like where are those stories coming from and all of that and then you're building this capacity to to meet yourself and then to communicate and and to understand what's going on and then my personal experience is that like you can do the work on your own right it's like okay mm -hmm. I'm, I'm healing this i'm releasing this i got this like I, i'm i'm good and then something happens in an actual human relationship you're like oh that still stinks that's so right. that's why i feel like like exactly it's like both end type of a thing because we need to do the work on our own but the deeper release happens through those beautiful relationships and then the power of this 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 journey and and the decisions that we get to make is that okay can i put myself into a container that allows me to heal and release those wounds through love instead of like constant fear or, or tension or, or disagreements and then the next time i am finding myself in a real life situation with a real life person i already like 
I can navigate that so much more holistically. And um, and when now like coming to the group container, I so agree because I have experienced that on my like personally, and I can see that the, those things in my per, um, in my group containers as well. That having somebody share their experience and having people hold space for that sharing is like beneficial in, in so many layers for the person who's mm -hmm. sharing. And for the for those people who are receiving it, because they get to now see a very similar thing that they like the same energy is still like inside of their bodies as well, right? And it allows us to access it from a new and different angle. So it's still very healing, even though you are not the one that's sharing, but it's like allowing you to still heal um, those very same aspects. So. Oh, that that was kind of me like agreeing big time on uh, mm -hmm. what was your take on it yeah i think my other favorite part of that communal work is just the destigmatizing of having trauma right because mm -hmm. for so long it only existed in private practice where you would go and get a diagnosis and you'd have this kind of like shame of i tell my therapist then i go to my real life and i love mm -hmm. that there's a, a seamlessness between that where you can just be in a group of people and say, this is what my body went through when I was little. It's not who I am. I'm here with all mm -hmm. of you now. Let's, let's hold this. And then yeah. you see people respond to you with attention and love, not with shame, not with ridicule. And it starts like real time uncoupling, you know, your body from the story of people aren't safe or people can be trusted. And you start to notice, oh, they can. Maybe I've just been orienting to the wrong people but there's all these other people I can orient to. And I, I see that happening with a lot of people in my groups. Yeah, yeah. And it's beautiful. And I think it gives us a sensation that like we're not in isolation with our, with our emotions, with our mm -hmm. thoughts, with our experience that, experiences that we have lived through. And it's kind of like we're in this together. And, and there's something so, such a like, um, because we are wired for connection. And, yeah. and healthy attachment and and listening to somebody else sharing and and then you feeling that oh, okay i know what you're talking about i have like not in the perhaps same circumstances or the same experience but i can feel <laughs> you mm -hmm. and there's something so powerful and healing when when this happens mm, yeah i agree <laughs> yeah we have uh we have couple of questions let me see what uh what has come up and maybe we can can answer them and and wrap wrap this beautiful live up because i've, I've been enjoying it <laughs> immensely <laughs> yeah, it's really easy oh. okay we have uh we have a question of like hi i want to know how we can heal the trauma stored in the tissues i mean what basic physical therapies can we opt in uh, opt for irrespective uh, of mental therapy and healing thank you so, so that's, that's the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite ways is vinyasa yoga. Um, because when we're talking about the trauma in the tissues, the biology of the trauma being in the tissues is a biology of constriction. So the tissues are constricted. Whether you're in fight, flight, freeze, or fawn, it doesn't matter what response is expressing. It's coming from a, a chronic constricted place. What I love about specifically all yoga I love, but vinyasa specifically, is it has activation and regulation built into every 30 seconds of it. So there's these moments where you're extending, let's say, an arm, and then you're constricting. There's moments where you're tired, and then you're releasing, and you're breathing through those releases. So the body's getting an opportunity to stretch out what's been constricted, and then constrict it again, and then stretch out what's been constricted, and slowly you build this capacity over the course of the session or the class. Mm -hmm. So in addition to somatic therapy and nutrition, um, vinyasa is, is definitely my favorite form of just pure movement. You know, no yeah. mental, uh, no mental input whatsoever, but movement. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, once again, like it's, it's a beautiful way to kind of like holistically approach that because you can like you can help your body like release the tension, like a physical, you know, tissue based tension but in in my in my understanding the way that i view those things is that if we don't incorporate like actually understanding where they're coming from and, and like understanding like okay we have that capacity to meet them and release them then 
we can like treat the symptom almost right like get rid of the tension in the tissues but if mm -hmm. we're not addressing the root like the cause of this mm -hmm. tension then it will pop up again because the body is communicating with you right the body is like actually that's right having a message through that uh, through that um tension so it's it's yeah like it's incorporating and understanding that root but also helping body to actively deal and release um, to whatever is present and whether it's a yoga or any other physical movement, uh, what, what kind of suits you personally, just go with that. It's degrading. <laughs> oh, I had a, um, a, a, a glimpsed a comment that um, and somebody asked like, how long does it take to heal trauma. Do you want to take oh, that gosh. on? <laughs> that, I'm laughing just because like, that's the question I asked myself <laughs> for 15 years. <laughs> um, yeah. It, <laughs> so this is why I stopped using the word healing. Um, I, I shouldn't say I stopped. I say it all the time. But one reason mm -hmm. I notice how we connotate the, the word healing with um, a moment. So when we talk about healing trauma, we we subconsciously think there's a moment where it's healed and it's like yes i can say things like oh after a couple months i no longer was afraid to speak publicly like i can say that mm -hmm. that was like a, i think it was like a three-month timeline or after a year i was able to perform music without having anxiety like those things are true and again the trauma is an expression of my life force it's abstract it has its own uh, agenda based on its belief of feeling safe or not feeling safe. So as I do these practices, it starts to update it being my nervous system, it being the charge of my nervous system. And that update mm -hmm. is like an abstract nonlinear process. Um, I can say every time we experience the sensations come up and we're able to be with them, each time we gain a little more trust with our own self with our own body, which is like gorgeous. And that's kind of instant. But that release that we think about, that release, I mean, you can release so much in one session and still have a year because then let's say I went on stage again and the charge came right back because the body was overcoupled. Yeah. So I, I never give people a time because it's literally impossible and I'd be lying to you. But um, yeah. there are so many nuances to that for me. Yeah. Right? I, mean, I don't yeah. have the time Absolutely. to even explain it. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. And, and I, I so agree. I think there was like such a like a profound truth in it. And, and like the body has its own timeline and, and yes. nobody knows that except like even you might not know that because like we just nope. have to we just have to kind of respect and, and like just trust that the body knows what it's doing. And, and it depends on like what trauma are you solving as well. Right. I, I love um, I love the analogy of like, you know, like let's say like you have like multiple traumas and they're like just like a bunch of wires all like mixed together. And then you, then you want to kind of like get like the biggest one out, right? The one that is like disturbing you the most or the one that you need to get rid of the most. And, and then you kind of like keep pulling it and you kind of just, you make the whole mess like more, even more capped up. Whereas mm -hmm. like sometimes we need to kind of address and like loosen up a little bit of those other wires. But that means that this wire, like releasing this wire, it takes a little bit of more time, but your body knows mm -hmm. what you need to release before it can tap into that. And, mm -hmm. and doing this work is, is kind of like, it's like an emotional fitness. You know, you go to the gym, you're like, okay, I can't lift any weights. I'm going to start mm -hmm. lifting, right? And soon enough, you're like, okay, cool, you know? I'm I'm pretty good at this, and then you take on the like the next level uh, weights and the next level weights, and so you know you going to a big stage and and still feeling whatever sensation that your body is associating with public speak speaking doesn't mean that you have almost like oh my god like there's not there hasn't been any healing happening or I have fallen right. back into into my trigger. It just means that you are lifting heavier weights, so you're playing on a completely different uh, level and in your humanness and still okay for you to meet those things and being healed doesn't mean that you're never going to get triggered or you're never going to get like emotional it That's means right. more of like how are you holding it like we're going back to what we said in the earlier of the chat um like what is your relationship with those emotions and how are you holding it because you are going to be human i guarantee you're going to have emotions and bad days and and, and all of these beautiful things that come <laughs> or go, go hand in hand of, uh, of 
experiencing this uh, this earthly um, thing that we're doing. We so yeah, literally just read my mind because I think yeah. I think we when we think of trauma releasing and trauma healing, we think I'm not going to be triggered or activated. And mm -hmm. it's impossible. I tell people you're activated till you die. And then how do we know? Maybe we're super activated then. But, you know, we yeah. are activated. Life is activating. It's always going to be. What the difference is what you just said. We have a way to be with the activation. So if we're yeah. looking to heal trauma, so we're like really calm and cool and nothing bothers us, stop now. <laughs> Turn away. <Yeah. laughs> That's not what's going to happen. What happens is the activation comes in and you welcome it because you have a history of practicing. And I keep seeing these comments, healing is a lifestyle, and I love that because um, I think of Resma Menachem, who wrote My Grandmother's Hands, and he will often say in that book, healing trauma is not a strategy, it has to be a culture. And why that's so important is when trauma's in our bodies, our bodies are interacting with things all day long. If our personal mm -hmm. lifestyle and culture doesn't support the nervous system, you can do all the trauma release you want, each day you're gonna be electrocuting your system again with the shows yeah. you watch, the friends you have, the job you have, the food you eat. It has to become yeah. your culture and then it holds you in that, in that nourishment. Yeah, yeah, very beautifully said and wholeheartedly agree. Oh, let me see, I, I think we had like one more question. Um, I have time for oh, one so more short question if it's short. Yes. Let's, let's see. Um, let's see what it is. Someone uh, that never received counseling said that uh, reliving trauma in the form of reenacting as a healing method. But when I took this approach, my, uh, approach, my therapist advised against it as it was destabilizing for you. What are your thoughts mm -hmm. on this? Okay, that was not a very no, very no, I, short can, one, but... <laughs> I can go there. I, can go there. Um, <laughs> I love the question. It's it's what I say about catharsis and immersion therapy. It's the same thing where something creates a huge shockwave through your body. And the idea is you live through it. And so your body realizes like I survived and mentally you're no longer afraid of it. Um, this is true for a lot of people. And because I see this as much more mental, not somatic, it's still not addressing the nervous system enough. It's still charge and stimulus and adrenaline meeting a system that's already charged and stimulated and adrenalized. What I find to be so powerful with any kind of immersion is immersing yourself in the counter vortex of what's been normal. So if I'm terrified of public speaking, which I, which I was, I played so many, sh I played like 80 shows as a musician and my terror did not change. <laughs> I would go on that stage, I'd be break out into a sweat, I would panic, I'd have to binge eat afterwards, nothing changed. It wasn't until, <laughs> it wasn't until I started taking that charge from stage and pendulating it into the somatic practices that then when I went on stage, I had capacity for the charge that came through me. So mm -hmm. I'm not someone that practices catharsis with people or any kind of um, reenactment that like this person said, the counselor said would destabilize them because if your system doesn't have the capacity, any additional charge is going to put you into trauma response again. Um, yeah. And sometimes we dissociate and we actually think we're healed. We say, oh my gosh, I feel larger than life. I feel so big. I, I'm out of my body. This is amazing. When really the body's overwhelmed, nothing's released, but we feel a numbness to the pain and we think we've healed something. So it's, it's nuanced, but that, that's how I tend to hold it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it, it's like when we are talking about like releasing traumas and doing this healing work, it's not important for us to like go dive deep into that experience mm. itself. Like, because exactly. as we say, like the trauma is not the experience, but like how you perceived it and what type of a charge or an energy or a story you're still holding on in your cells. So, that's exactly, uh, so that's exactly it. Beautiful. Thank you, Louis, for, for jumping on live on this, this beautiful weekend. And I hope that everybody who tuned in, there was many of you, um, did enjoy it as much and you gained something super valuable. And, uh, and yeah, any last words before we jump off? I just thank you. Thank you for having me. It was lovely to hear your brain and see your body and just kind of move with you. It was really beautiful. I thank you so much. Likewise. I think it was a beautiful first live and uh, for Louis, <laughs> I hope so. And, um, and yeah, I will see you around. Bye, my Bye friend. Your way.